guys welcome back to my youtube channel daniel rosal here today's video i'm going to be talking about cold brew coffee which is my latest discovery i got into coffee again recently over a month here in israel that's called the hagim and uh, during this month um basically observing jews i know you're listening to a video about cold brew I expect to hear about jews but bear with me for one second observant jews don't use electricity or uh, cook so i kind of got into turkish coffee again then i was like wait through so many days i can't enjoy it i should find a way of making coffee that i can that with my religious views i can make all the time and i hit upon cold brew coffee never heard about it before now i'm pretty transparent with myself i'd like to think when it comes to the reasons i ingest coffee it is for the caffeine content and what I'm when I'm discovering cold brew at the moment, I'm reading a lot about you know different ratios, dilute cold brew, cold brew uh, concentrate, ready to drink cold brew. Watching a lot of YouTube videos, reading a lot of recipes online. There's even a subreddit for cold brew, and I'm trying to think the whole time what are the factors affecting the caffeine. Now I'm making one liter of cold brew per day as my like sort of daily you know cold brew to have and my target is to get to approximately the point of caffeine that's going to be equivalent to four drinks of uh, hot hot brewed coffee because for me personally that's like my kind of daily coffee cut off is four i usually have two cups of coffee in the morning one after one in the afternoon and then if i'm working late i might have one more for a total of four max per day any more than that i just kind of it affects my sleep uh i feel anxious it's not a good feeling at all so that's what I'm trying to replicate. Now, I've been thinking about reading all these ratios, reading all these recipes, what's actually affecting the caffeine. I did a little bit of research, did a little bit of thinking, and that's what I want to share in this video. Three factors. One, coffee quantity. Two, steep time. Three, steep temperature. It's my contention that pretty much every recipe for cold brew that is varying so considerably in all of these factors has to be changing one or more of these parameters. Now, I thought there was one more parameter, grind size, right? You think that, well, cold brew is typically done with a coarse to very coarse grind size, uh, but some methods use a, a smaller grind size, and the reason they do that is because, or they're able to do that because they're using, you know, more filtration as an extra step, maybe running the cold brew through a Chemex or cheesecloth or something like that. I'm using one of these immersible stainless steel grinders. But I, I was kind of assuming that, well, if you're using, let's say, a medium grind or even a fine grind and filtering, it's probably stronger. The reason I thought that was, well, you're breaking up the coffee bean into more parts, you're increasing the surface area of the coffee in contact with the water, so you're going to extract more efficiently and extract more caffeine. I did find, and guess what, not the case. I found a, a, an article in Scientific Reports called the effect of time roasting temperature and grind size on caffeine and chlorogenic acid concentrations in cold brew coffee and basically the tldr is that the grind size did not impact the chlorogenic acid and caffeine concentrations of cold brew samples significantly indicating that the rate determining step in extraction for these compounds did not depend on surface area so basically, it doesn't really make a difference. That's the uh, translation of that. Now, it's interesting if you're researching caffeine extraction that stuff like this does exist online in food science journals. The other thing I was thinking, so let, let's move on. So we, we can discount grind size as a factor. Let's talk about the three factors we have left, starting with the coffee quantity. Now, one thing I wondered was, you know, perhaps a constraint in the cold brew making process is the solubility of caffeine in water and it turns out that's also not really the case it turns out that water can basically hold pretty much as much caffeine as would be safe to ingest so when we're preparing cold brew we're talking about preparing a solution with a solute and a solvent and uh, it turns out basically that uh, that's not really something that we need to think about. So it, it stands to reason that the more caffeine, sorry, the more coffee you're using in your cold brew preparation, the more caffeine is going to be extracted. Regarding factor number two, the steep time. So I've seen this very, just like so wildly, some people have done a four hour uh, caffeine extraction as cold brew extraction. Some people have done 48 hours now what i'm looking for and if you have found this online please drop me a comment 
or I will upload another video when I actually source this information online. Incredible scientific studies using ideally, you know, spectom spect spectometry to determine the caffeine content. I haven't seen um, graphs about at what time there's no more caffeine being extracted. I imagine whether we're talking about cold extraction or room temperature extraction, that is going to become a point in time at which basically as much caffeine as can be extracted has been extracted or all the caffeine has been extracted from the beans. Those are not the same thing. Independent of that, that's definitely going to be a factor. And uh, you can find scientific uh, papers online basically plotting out up to short brewing times because they're intended for hot coffee how long uh you know that the, basically it's an increasing relationship the more time you have that coffee in contact with the water the more caffeine is going to be extracted that brings us on to our final factor which is the steep temperature now you can definitely find this information online how brewing temperature affects caffeine extraction again mostly in food science journals unfortunately i haven't been able to find it in for cold brew in other words they've looked at this for tea they've looked at this for coffee and it is again a direct relationship in other words the higher the temperature of the water the more caffeine is extracted and as we go down in steeping temperature in the temperature of the water the less efficient the extraction process becomes not just of caffeine but of the other many many other compounds in coffee and i think there's something like 2000 compounds in coffee just besides caffeine there's a couple more psychoactive compounds like theophylline present in coffee there are uh there are aromatic oils and there's a bunch of different things in the coffee beans so we're only looking here at one compound that's kind of where my research is now i'm going to be continuing to make one batch of cold brew per day uh taking notes of the steeping time i'm using the room temperature at uh, the temperature i'm steeping at and also how much the quantity of coffee I'm using every time. I was noting the grind size, but in light of reading that study, it seems it's not necessary, at least from the, from the perspective of uh, ascertaining how much caffeine I'm getting from my cold brew. Hope that was useful. If you've had uh, thoughts of your own, if you've gone down this rabbit hole yourself and come up with more information than I've been able to offer, do drop me a comment. Thank you for watching slash listening.